Hi, welcome to another Tech Minds video. Now, this is a bit of an impromptu kind of video because I've just come across this pretty cool bit of software for these Kwangsheng radios that everybody seems to be quite interested in at the moment due to the fact that there's lots of custom firmware out there. Now, I stumbled across a GitHub page, Nick Shaw, who's released an application called Kwangsheng Dock, which runs on Windows. It allows you to remotely control the Kwangsheng radios using custom firmware. And this is this is what it looks like. And it, it looks pretty cool to me. So I just thought I'd do a quick video to show you. And also I'll provide the links down in the description below where you can download this from. Now this software runs on Windows and it does require the custom firmware that's provided by Nick Shaw on the GitHub site. Now loading the firmware is extremely easy, just like before you hold the PTT while powering on, have the cable plugged in, and you can use a web installer. In fact, his GitHub page, uh, you've got a couple of options here. You've got the Kwangsheng Doc software, um, which you can just go into, go to releases, uh, download the zip, unzip it. It does require .NET version six, I believe. So if you haven't got that installed, it will prompt you to install it. I'll go through that in a moment. But if you have a look down on the GitHub page itself, uh, there's an interesting diagram down here because one of the things that happens is when you connect your programming cable into the radio, you're going to lose transmit and receive audio. So they've provided a little diagram here so that you can easily adapt the cable so you can still hear and listen to what's going on on the radio. Because obviously if you're gonna remote control it or you're gonna control it from your computer, and you're still going to want to hear what's going on or even transmit. So take a good read of that as well. But anyway, let's have a look at the software and uh, and see what uh, see what it can do. So I've got the radio connected at the moment via the uh, programming cable just connected to my Windows computer. We can see the two VFOs here. One of the first things that I noticed was this nice channel editor. So if I click on channel ed edit, uh, we get this come up. Let me just uh, move these screens out of the way. So I've done a quick read. It will read all the channels from the radio. This is pretty cool. I wonder if they will incorporate some repeater book features into this, because I think that'd be pretty awesome as well. Then you don't have to manually uh, edit or enter all these frequencies. But uh, so that's pretty good. Right off the bat, you've just got this uh, channel editor. So if we go back to this screen, obviously you've got all of the controls that you'd normally find on the radio as well, which is uh, which is really nice. Uh, this bottom left-hand button here is actually the setup window. Um, so if it doesn't connect straight away, this is what you can do. You can use this screen to choose the serial port for the actual radio. You're on audio in and audio out device there. So obviously you could use your PC computer speakers, etc. You can then also change some of the different features and functions and how the application looks all from this screen as well. But I think the most important settings here is going to be the serial port and the audio in and audio out. Now, I haven't actually made the cable up yet, but I do plan to do so to try that out. OK, so back on this main screen. Now, you can adjust, obviously, these frequencies just like you would on the radio using the uh, up and down. As you can see here, I'm just going up and down. And it's, it's showing, I do like this, it looks really nice. So it's exactly just like you would use on the radio. However, check this out. You press this button over here that says SPECT. Press that. Well, and now you're presented with the waterfall, or analyzer, sorry. So I'll click analyzer, and there you go, it's live. How cool is that? So you can actually look at the analyzer directly on your computer using this uh, remote or Quangsheng Dock software, which is uh, which is pretty cool. There's also a waterfall option here. I'm going to click that. I'm not too sure. Uh, I haven't tried this bit yet, actually. So it'd be interesting to see um, how that uh, shows up with any signals that it's detected. So that's quite interesting. I think what we need to do is kind of try and go to somewhere where we've got a bit more activity. Let me see if I just drop it down to the FM broadcast band just to see if we get any more. Yeah, there we go. It's nice, isn't it? We can obviously adjust the intensity as well, which is quite good. 
This is quite impressive. <laughs> Very impressive indeed. There's also some other options you've got here as well. You can click line so you can change obviously how the screen looks here. You can even, you've even got a heat map. But uh, I actually quite like the bar. I think the bar graph looks quite nice. I think this is definitely going to be useful if uh, you've got this sat on the side, especially if you've got the audio cable connected as well. Because I think that without that, uh, well, you can't hear anything. And the whole point of radio is to be able to hear and transmit signals, I guess. But uh, so, yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and make up that cable uh, just so that we get some audio through as well. Uh, and you can pretty much then use it just like a, a remote radio. You've also got the PTT button there as well, which is which is quite cool. So to exit from here, you can literally just press the exit button. It goes back to the normal kind of VFO looking screen and press that button and uh, away you go. You've also got all, all of the different settings that you would have actually on the radio, which is quite nice. Let's try the air band. So if I do something like 129000, uh, and then we'll just go over to the analyzer. Just going to bring that floor down a bit. Okay, so it looks like the frequency for the analyzer is separate from the VFO. So if I just do that, there we go. So that's quite interesting. We'll probably see a lot more sort of peaks or variations of peaks when you're looking at the air band because of the many transmissions that are going on and for such a short period of time. But anyway, guys, I thought I'd just show you this application. It's, it's very interesting and the work that's been done on the firmware and everything is just amazing. Uh, just a quick note actually, if you do wanna try this and as mentioned at the start of the video, you will need the custom firmware that goes with this. So all you need to do is head over to the Nick Shaw GitHub page, go to the Quangsheng doc firmware, uh, download the firmware packed bin file. You can actually use one of the online firmware download tools that's already out there and available. If you scroll down here, let me go to this online flasher. So we just uh, browse to the file, find the file, click flash firmware, and then it will just prompt you for which COM port the radio is connected to. Remember, you have to start the radio by holding the PTT and turning it on. The white LED at the top will then illuminate, meaning it's in firmware download mode. And obviously with the cable connected, you click connect, you select, well, you select the radio, click connect, and then it downloads. And then you can go ahead and use this software. And that's pretty much it, really. Just to quickly cover how you actually start this application. So when you downloaded the zip file from the GitHub page, you'll be presented with uh, all, all of these files in a folder once you've uncompressed the zip folder. Uh, and the application you need is Quangshang doc. Uh, and you literally just double click that uh, to uh, to run it. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care for now.